Well, hey there, Crosstown. Thanks for joining us for another conversation revolving around the vision statement of our church. We've been in this three-part series here at church on Sunday mornings called Revision. We're trying to revision what God's vision for our church is and what God's vision for your life is. And not only revision, but re-engage with what he's called us to do as a church. And so today I wanna to talk to you about, we wanna to talk to you about displaying Christ's love to the community. That is our third D known as display, mm -hmm. which I want you to notice something. Every D has an environment. So Discover had our worship service environment on Sunday morning. Develop had, Develop had our uh, small group environment throughout the week. And display though is a little bit unique. It involves two things. One, displaying Christ's love to the people inside our church through ministry. That happens through service opportunities and ministry teams. And then we want to display Christ's love to the community outside the four walls of the church. And that happens much more organically, both through outreach events that you guys plan and prepare, as well as just doing life, individually, just being involved in the community. And so joining me today, as you guys probably know, is Pastor Tim, our Shingle House campus pastor, and then Pastor Stu, our arcade campus pastor. And uh, their job as campus pastors is to care for and equip the people at their campus. Caring for is a lot of pastoral care, but a lot of what you guys do is equipping your people for ministry. In other words, I've, I've heard it put like this. As pastors, we don't wanna just minister to our congregations. That's important, that's one half of your job description. But as pastors, you wanna minister through your congregation, and that's the equip part, which it, it involves so much of ministry that you don't wanna just be the ministry uh, to people you want to do ministry through people you mentioned it earlier off camera but in our membership packet we say what we say that you know the that the, the member is the minister right the the pastors the staff are the administers yeah and and i love that because it is it's it, it takes the onus you know it's not on us if 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 all the ministry happens through me we're gonna fail miserably right because I'm one person, but I love the fact that we can work together. That's And that's not a picture of the body of Christ. No. The, church, the early church, the body of Christ, wasn't one body part doing everything. No. It's like a body part. Everybody does things that Working are different together. than others, and we all function together. And so, so let's break this down. We want to talk about, first, you being involved in the ministry of the church, the things that happen inside the church. I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot that takes place to pull off a Sunday morning service not just on Sunday mornings, but there's a lot that goes into hosting small groups here at the church. And so if the body of Christ is not being the body of Christ, we're not gonna be able to do the mission of Christ. And so this is your encouragement from your pastors to be able to engage with what's happening on Sunday mornings and throughout the week where you're involved in a ministry team. We want every single person who calls Crosstown their home to actively engage in ministry and serve on a ministry team. And that's gonna look different for everybody because everybody's got different gifts and personalities and passions, but you gotta be involved in something, something. And so, bottom line, are you involved? Are you actively engaging in the ministry of our church? So I got a, I got a question for you guys, since you're the ones that run everything at your <laughs> campus. Where do you want people involved? What's the need? Like if I came to your church, what would you say? Here's Pastor Tim's top three. It's funny because we, we just talked about this at our uh, leadership meeting on Sunday. The top three are Kid Zone, Kid Zone, <laughs> and Kid Zone. <laughs> if I had to add a couple more, I mean... Uh, nursery. Nursery toddlers. <laughs> yeah. No, that falls under Kid Zone, okay, but, okay. but uh, Ushers and Greeters was one, and, and even Hospitality. Uh, that, those are some pretty big needs right now. Kid Zone is always a big one. I, I tell people in Shingle House a lot that I, I think that uh, the people who serve in Kid Zone have a special spot in heaven. Oh yeah, I think I really believe that. I have five kids, so I know what it's like to have Kid Zone basically all week. Yeah, <laughs> or more so my wife. Your wife. But, I was going to say Andy yeah. does, not you. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Kid that's Zone's good. a big one. The two things that you mentioned there, um, the two areas of ministry that I picked up on, had nothing to do with the Sunday morning service. And I think that's the tension that a lot of people face is I want to be in the service mm -hmm. on Sunday morning and experience things. And as long as what I'm doing in the church as, as an area of ministry doesn't affect that, I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. But you just described a couple of things that are outside of the sanctuary 
that you desperately need at your campus so that you can do ministry effectively, yep. right? Absolutely. And Kids Zone, just you're down in the basement mm -hmm. there in Shingle House. Kids Zone, actually, you have a basement yep. too. So yep. you're just totally disconnected from the service. And then what you said also with uh, greeters is it's happening outside. And sometimes those greeters don't get into the sanctuary until yeah. 10 minutes uh, to the service as well. Yeah. And that's it's something that we still need people to do and to sacrifice for. But yet we don't want them to sacrifice their spiritual growth. And so we have this saying, let's see if you guys know it. It's sit, sit one, one, serve one. Sit one, serve yeah, one. So uh, both of you now have two services so that you now have two opportunities to um, have people serve and, and sit at one. And that all that wasn't always the case. Both of you right. guys were at one service at one time. And that's a struggle, that's a challenge. So one of the things that we have a great opportunity now during COVID is because we have limited seating capacity, we have double services. Let's take advantage of that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And that would really, really help Pastor Tim if you could serve in children's ministry. <laughs> that would be great. I'm going to Arcade. Okay. What is Pastor Stu's top three places to serve? Which, by the way, their answers are going to be very similar to the other campuses. So if you're listening from any of the other campuses, just copy and paste, and it's going to be the same probably. You know, it, it's funny you say that. Probably my number one, Kid Zone. And, and I think it's everywhere. I, and I think there's a reason for that. Our Kid Zone, we do it well. And to do it well, you need people right. to do it well. And so it's probably one of our higher numbers of volunteers that we need to be able to pull it off. So, so for me, it'd sure. be kid zone. Um, it'd be worship team. We really need people in arcade that can play an instrument. Um, <laughs> you may or may not know this. I do not have the gift of music. Lies. It's all lies. <laughs> I am not the guy you want leading worship, but I love worship and I appreciate worship. And I love the work that our worship team puts in to do that. So we could really use help there. And then I think probably the next thing in Arcade would be, I would love to see more small group leaders. Mm. Um, I think we have, we have a, a decent number of people in small groups, but I think if we had some other groups at different times and maybe different topics, we might catch some other people. And I think part of the, maybe part of the problem, part of the reason people don't do that is because, well, I don't know everything about the Bible. So what if right. somebody asked me a question, I don't know the answer right. to how am I leading a small group? You don't have to know everything about the Bible. Um, so, you know, step up and do those things. So I would say for arcade, that'd be the big thing. Kids zone, worship team, and small group leaders. Yeah, and as far as small groups, one of the biggest takeaways is you might not know everything about the Bible, but you might have a great home yes. to be able to host a group. A absolutely. And so there's a difference between being a Bible study teacher and then just a small group facilitator. We do have content through Right Now Media or sermon-based questions that it doesn't take a rocket science or a theologian to lead, but you could have a gift. God could have given you that house to facilitate and host a small group for the benefit of God's people. And so that would be a great thing. So I'm going to your church. I got a good environment. I might consider that, but I'm a guy. You're not expecting me to serve in children's ministry, right? We actually have you many do. guys right. that serve in children's ministry. And, and I love that. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things I've always loved men's ministry. I've had a passion for men's ministry. And I feel like one of the things that we lack in this world are men stepping up and leading like we should. Mm -hmm. And I think the importance, one of the important things of having some of our men in kids zone working is, let's face it, some of these yep. kids that come, they might not have that male role model in their life to know what's it like to be a man. Yeah. Here's a young boy trying to learn what's it like to grow up to be a Christian man, yep. and, and they have a great influence in that. And mm -hmm. I would say kids zone and roots. Yeah, you know, we, same we, thing. we so need that. I hope everybody listening to this right now hears that. If God is calling you, tugging on your heart to make a difference for the next generation, would you please consider, especially the men in our church? I think children's ministry is fun. I still remember the days when I was serving in children's ministry. When we ran out of time, the pastor went too long, which I never do. <laughs> By the way, I never preach too long. No. It's always what God wants me to share. But anyways. Sure. We'll go uh, with that. <laughs> right. But I remember having to like fill that time and I'd pull that broom from the, the corner and start playing the air guitar. <laughs> yep. Men can do those things. Yeah. We can do those things. And we need them. I, it's just an encouragement to the other campuses as well. I know you guys have quite a few men that serve in children's ministry. That's not always the case at the other campuses. And every time I go, it's just... One of the things I pray about that more guys would get involved to influence that next generation. So Absolutely. those are those are really great lists. But we're not just trying to give lists here. 
Like the, the heart behind what we're hoping you to hear through this message this morning, as well as during this time right now in our vision is that we don't want you to just do a bunch of things. Our, our heart is not for you to just stay busy doing church stuff. It's for you to do church stuff for the right reasons. So let's spend some moments talking about the why. The, we talked about the what they can do inside the four walls of the church, but why do we do it? What's the motivation behind serving? Who are we doing it for? Just get into that. What, like for you in your own journey with serving and what you desire as a pastor for your people, what, what do you say? For me, there, there's two key verses that I think to when I think of serving. One, it pertains to people inside the church and one outside. Uh, as far as inside the church, I would say I go to John 13, 35. And I'll read it here so I don't misquote. And this is, this is a great thing because this is chapter 13. It's, it's the Last Supper. It's Jesus washing the disciples' okay. feet. And so he's, he's a servant. He's serving them. And then 13, 35, by this, by what? By this, by this serving, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Mm. And that's part of inside the church. We love each other. We care for each other. We serve in areas. You know, I love you, so I'm going to go in kid zone. I'm going to take care of your kids so you can enjoy the service and you can, you know, pay attention to worship right. and not be chasing right. little Johnny right. around. W whatever. Um, you know, that's loving on on each other inside the church and then I, so let's build that i love you so i got to church early at 7 30 to put the coffee on so that you can absolutely can have a little caffeine and, yeah uh, you know i i love that so i love you so i got to church i don't know if you know this or not but some worship teams get there 6 30 7 o'clock in the morning i love you so i got out of bed early so that we can have a great worship experience absolutely i love you so i'm changing this dirty diaper <laughs> So that you don't have to, and you can have a good time on the way home from church, right? I, I came early and shoveled snow. We usually have a little snow in our cave. Yeah, I love you. I love so you, you, so I came early. Your face exactly. And walking in. Exactly. And so yes, that should be the reason I serve. Whatever area of ministry you're in, it should have the attitude and heart of I love you. So I'm going to do this so that other people can know that we're disciples, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Exactly, exactly. And then when I think about outreach to the community, you know, our outreaches that we're going to, we'll kind of get yeah. to here a little bit. I think of 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. You've heard it at every wedding, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, but I love the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of men and of, or of angels, but do not have love, I may resounding gong or a clanging cymbal yeah. so i can go out into the community and i can preach the gospel to them but if i don't love them which is what i see a lot of our outreaches we're just loving on the community right i'm just a just a gong just a symbol just yep. making noise as i mentioned a couple of weeks ago think about the people in your life that have had the most influence in your life it was probably because they loved you when you least expected it and least deserved it yep. and that had such a grip on you so it's how we interact with each other inside the church as well as how we share that love outside the church. And that's the heart of this final D. It's displaying Christ's love Absolutely. to the community. That is that is a huge why. That's a motivation for why we serve. Anything else that comes to mind? I mean, a couple of verses, which, I mean, maybe cliche, but of course the Great Commission. <laughs> um, go and make disciples. Oh, so you just go want, and you want me to do what Jesus tells me to do? Is that <laughs> it's a pretty good saying? idea if you're going to claim to follow Jesus. Okay. You have to do what All right. he's not did. a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. And uh, and then, I mean, I mean, the CMA is big on Acts 1-8, and it's a great scripture. I love, uh, well, let me read it. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. And I just love that uh, that ripple effect. It's, I mean, right. from a small portion, and it just keeps going out and out and out. And, and how does that happen if the people who are called by his name don't respond and go and serve? I, again, I tell the people in Shingle House when I'm going through the connection card and saying, hey, if you want to serve, we want you to serve. We want you to be connected. We want you to do what Jesus did and Jesus served. Right. So, um, Yeah, that's, that's a good motivation. That's our identity as Christians. That's why two of our core values is found people, find people. So if you've been found by the grace of God, it's natural then to go share that good news with other people. If someone told you the best news in the history of the world Amen. and then you kept that news to yourself, 
What does that say about your desire to really believe right. that news? And then right. save people, serve people. Again, if, you, if you've been served by the master and he met your greatest need, wouldn't you want to then go serve other people? That's our identity. That's our motivation. Um, and I think we need to own that. We need to really, really internalize that because here's the thing. We'll stop serving if we forget that. Absolutely. If we don't know the why behind what we do, trust me, there is nothing glamorous about changing dirty diapers in the nursery. There is nothing glamorous than showing up on a Friday night like many of our volunteers do and vacuuming the carpets. It is not <laughs> glamorous. You get bored. And there's plenty of days, and you could probably testify to this, and I'm sure you guys too could too before becoming a pastor, that you don't want to do those things. That mm -hmm. Those things become too tedious either too boring or you don't see the significance, but when you start connecting the dots, this is what Christ called me to do, and this is why I'm doing it, because otherwise I just come across as a, a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, and if I don't do it, people won't see how I love my brother in Christ. When you start connecting all those dots, then you understand who you're doing it for. Right. Um, as I mentioned this morning in my sermon from Luke chapter 12 or chapter 14 actually remember these verses stage rest for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes blessed are you when christ comes back he finds you actively serving that we don't serve just to serve other people. We ultimately serve it because we're doing it for Jesus. And if we ever lose sight of that, we just we won't be serving for the right reasons, right? I, I think that's key. Why are we serving? Because, you know, I know for myself, I struggle with things in the past where, okay, I'm doing something, but I'm not seeing the fruit. You know, mm -hmm. I remember there was a time in my life before Crosstown, and I was leading the men's ministry at our old church. And one of the things we did was a, a men's breakfast. And I remember Saturday morning, get up, make this huge breakfast. And I remember one week, there was myself and one other guy there. Mm. And I was crushed. Yeah, I can... And I thought, you know, why am I doing this? What's the win? Because in my mind, the win was getting guys there, right. fellowship, growing together. When really, I think the win I've learned later was be obedient. This is what I've called you to do. So do it. Yeah. You're doing it for an audience of one. Of one. Instead of not, however not many that ideas. guy who yes. showed up though, but him being the one. It's so the, easy to get wrapped up though in, in results and, absolutely. and forget that we're called to obedience. Mm -hmm. We're not called to results. We're called to, to be obedient. Yeah. That's yeah. really hard to remember. Absolutely. So for the I don't know, I'm making up stats. So while we're making up stats, <laughs> let's just say fifty percent of our church who are not involved in ministry, and I might be a little off, but there's quite a few people who just come on Sunday mornings and don't get me wrong, we, we glad that, we're glad that you started off that way. Absolutely. We don't expect people just to come to our church and then all of a sudden get involved from day one. You do have to have a little bit of time to get your feet wet, to get to know the church. But we've had some people, you know, call Crosstown their home, perhaps even go to a small group, but both of those areas, environments, are you getting fed, you getting mm -hmm. fed, you getting fed. I'm sorry to say, but if you've gotten fed for too long, you need to stop eating and you need to stop, you need to start serving. And if we have a, a good percentage of our church not serving, we need to ask the question, why? Yeah. Do you understand that when you serve, you're using your gifts, your passions, your abilities, your experiences, your time, right, your talents, to serve the only master, the only one who's worthy to be served. And so don't, don't forget that. And don't forget that the way we serve and interact with each other is a testimony to this community. I said it a couple of weeks ago, but our walk is the testimony of the gospel. The way we walk, the way we treat each other, the way we serve, the way we use our gifts actually says something to a lost world. And so the, the challenge is more and more of you to get involved. The old adage is, this is true staff, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but 20% of the people in most churches do 80% of the work. Yep. And everybody's heads are nodding because they've experienced <laughs> yep. that at one point or another. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And I don't know what our percentage is, but we've got to push that. We're not immune to this as a church. Mm -hmm. This happens to us and we need to do everything we can to push back on that. And so mm -hmm. we're calling you to lean in, re-engage with the vision and serve within the four walls of the church. 
Um, just a little takeaway. On our website, we have something called our ministry catalog. And on the website, if you can see that, will be a list of ministries available for you to scroll through. And if you click on learn more, it'll open up another page and you can read what's involved in that ministry, what you're committing to, uh, the expectations, who to contact, and really what's the win. When you serve in a ministry, there's a win. There's something at stake. And so we've went through the painful effort in every single area of ministry to identify who to contact, how to get involved, what's expected, and what's the win so that there could be clarity. People say no to what's confusing, and we've tried to take away the confusion from this process. And so go to crosstownalliance.com slash serve, I believe is the link. It's, I know it's on the, uh, what, it's on right on the homepage also. Great. Click under serve, yep. So take advantage of that. Let's transition to the second aspect of display, and that is displaying Christ's love, not just inside the four walls of the church, but out into the community. Two ways that happens through outreaches, as well as just organically our people being involved in what's happening in the community. So doing life. one at a time, um, people know the out, some of the outreaches that we've already done. Could you share um, two things? And you don't need to go in this order, but the fruit of some of those outreaches, maybe someone who's started attending your church so that people can connect the dots mm -hmm. of what, we, what we're doing and the fruit that we're seeing, and then what's upcoming. What are you guys planning? Um, we'll go to Pastor Tim. One that sticks out um, is a lady from Shingle House who, before we launched, we did an outreach at Nani Pops, the, the local ice cream shop where my wife was working. And we did an outreach there and we were handing out free ice cream and invites. Um, two years, I think to the day almost, I, I think it was Easter, two years lady, uh, later, a lady came uh, and I was able to talk with her and I was like, so how did you hear about this? And she said, I attended your Easter outreach two years ago. And I was like, what? <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> two years ago. And man, that, it really hit me that she came from an outreach that was that long ago. It's like, man, that, that's pretty awesome. And um, I think we've all experienced outreaches where it's just like, it was good, but then that next Sunday or the next two Sundays, it didn't seem like there. no new yeah. people yep. were there. The people that we talked to at the outreach didn't show up and it gets a little bit discouraging yeah. and maybe people serving at that outreach wonder whether or not that time was worth it. But one of the things that we've seen over and over and over that Tim's story just proved is it's in the, the planting of the seeds. Mm -hmm. And so maybe her life was perfect, maybe not, but perfect two years prior to that first time coming to church. She didn't need Jesus, didn't know her need for Jesus. It was nice that she got some free ice cream, <laughs> but she really wasn't there at yeah. that point. But because you planted some seeds and you did some other things along the way as sure. well, that the story started to build and focus started to turn when things went bad, she started to look yeah. for a church and you were the first yeah. church that she thought of. And so there's an importance there of staying consistent, right? Yeah. I think being consistent at outreaches. You guys That's, set the table, but you gotta be consistent to come to the table and to participate in these outreaches as well. Yeah. That's a great illustration. Um, can you think of one, of some fruit from an outreach that you guys did? Well, I, yeah, I mean, one of the things I was thinking of, just what you were saying about setting the table and, and the continual, I was thinking, you know, okay, we had our, our Halloween, our trunk or treat outreach. Yeah. We had 500 and some people there. That next Sunday, we didn't have 500 people <laughs> in church. And, and so it's easy to say, well, it didn't work. It was useless, you know. But I think it's that continual, one of the things that we've been able to do in Arcade was, has been the, the school supply, the backpack giveaway. Right. And then this past year, as our Christmas as our, our Christmas offering, we did the Giving Tree, and we were able to use a lot of the same people from the backpack as with the Giving Tree. And that has given us the opportunity to have multiple touches, multiple communication with these people. And I've had great conversations with some of these people 
that from the, especially with the giving tree that we had originally started with the backpacks right, and the a few supplies. months earlier. Yeah, and so now we're, now with the giving tree, we're communicating, and these people maybe have come to the backpack the last three years. Sure. So now we're up, okay, maybe four or five times we've been able to communicate with them. Yeah. And I've had great conversations, haven't, haven't had a lot come to church yet, but I really feel like that, you know, I, it might be more than two years, yeah. but I think, Sure, they're you're building into something. Yeah, we're building into something there. So I've heard it said that people need to hear an advertisement or a promotion seven times before yep. responding to that. And so that's why advertisers come at it from all different kind of angles, from all different kind of mediums. It's, it's not too unlike what we do through outreaches. We need to give people multiple opportunities to A, respond to the gospel, but B, to invite them to a place of grace as well. It's amazing what happens. I'll, tell, I'll share a little story without getting into too many details, but... Um, we, we did so many outreaches early on when I was a pastor here and, didn't, and there was a time where we didn't see a lot of people coming. There was a real bad tragedy that happened in our community. And when that happened, people knew our church. Yes. They knew it from VBSs. They knew it from some of the stuff that we did on Main Street. And it opened up doors to conversations where I was the pastor that was called to do the funeral. And several people came to the church as a result of that. Now, the funeral wasn't an outreach, but we were there. We were present and available for people when, they're, when they were really in need. And because of those outreaches, you've built a relationship with those people. Right. So when they, there was the need, yep. that, that's where they turned. Yeah, yeah and we, I think that's so important to build that relationship with our community. Yeah, we need to do that. So what's, what's coming up? What are you guys planning? We talked about displaying Christ's love to the community mm -hmm. this morning. So what are we, what are we doing uh, as a church moving forward? So Shingle House is looking at doing uh, crosstown care packages. Okay. So we've got a lot of people in the community that are either quarantined or have COVID or even beyond that are, are recovering from other sicknesses or injuries. And, uh, you know, people have needs. And so we're going to use the, the canvas bags that we had. Uh, for last Easter, which didn't didn't happen, so we got yeah. a whole bunch of bags to use, and I was like, well, let's use what we yeah. have, and then we're gonna ask people to to give the things that we need to make these care packages up, and then we're gonna take we'll them deliver to them. them. Yeah, gonna, and those are the best outreaches: yeah. meeting a tangible need, absolutely, and then inviting them to a place of grace. People absolutely. will be more open when we meet tangible needs. Uh, that's what they're doing in Shingles. What are you guys doing in Arcade? Well, we we actually often have every year we've been able to have a winter outreach because in arcade we have the arcade winter fest big festival and we always would um, help with kind of manning the sledding hill right. hot chocolate and popcorn and stuff but with covid like everything else that's changed this year and so um, we are still going to be able to be part of the winter fest at, at the very least we're going to be in the parade and do stuff in the parade and i'm actually hoping to be able to not just have a float in the parade, but also use that to give out drinks to hot people. Hot cocoa, stuff. maybe water, I'm not sure. And um, we we're looking into doing like custom cups with our logo and yes. service times and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's the hope. And, and use that, that cup as an invite. Right. And then, you know, give a cup of cold water or a cup of hot chocolate, hot chocolate in the winter. Jesus is uh, <laughs> yeah. In Jesus' name. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And, and other than that, you know, I really want to be part of the Winterfest because that's what's happening in the community right. at that time. So we're yeah. going to be part of that, at least in the parade, and maybe other ways we'll have opportunities. Yeah, and those are some of the best outreaches. Outreaches can be one of two ways. It can be like a broad audience where you go to a place, an event that's happening in the community, and you might not get a lot of personal touches, but you're going to cover the masses and get a lot of touches, a lot of invites out there. And then there's going to be more personal type of outreaches where it's a care package. You're, you know, he could probably hand out five hundred invites you're gonna only hand out 50 30 bags 40, 50, yeah. well, 50 you're gonna you're gonna aim high <laughs> 50 <laughs> <laughs> and uh but that's gonna be much more personal yeah. and, and i've heard pastors say well i like this one or i it's both they're in. both you gotta yeah, be both in and i think those are important the other thing that we're doing that we're really excited about is um doing these acts of kindness mm -hmm. We're trying to think inside the box. There's so many limitations that we have because of COVID, but one of our core values is to think inside the box to allow our limitations to inspire our great, greatest creativity. And Absolutely. the biggest thing that we could do is to get the, the, the tools into your hands and to allow you guys to do the acts of kindness. And so we're providing these invite cards for all of our people. 
And then we're going to encourage you to invite people in 10 different ways. And these are just some of the ways that they could probably participate in this. You take this invite card, and then let's say you're going through the... I can't use an example. You don't have anything. <laughs> well, you're going through McDonald's drive through or... Tim, Tim Hortons. Hortons. You got so much stuff. Burger King. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Way better than that. <laughs> Turn my back. <laughs> so, sorry. Woo. So you're going through the drive through and the Lord puts it on your heart to pay for the person behind you. You can leave this card with the um, drive through person, have them give it to them as an invite card, telling them that you just paid for their meal. Just to, to do something as an act of kindness. I'll give you another example. This just happened to us the other night. Uh, Aaron was at the grocery store. She was buying groceries. There was a lady uh, across the aisle that just got done paying for her groceries. And she came over to Aaron and just totally paid for all of her groceries. It was an awesome, That's awesome, awesome thing. And, you know, she didn't invite us to a church or anything like that, but mm -hmm. she did an act of kindness. And in that moment, you know, Aaron probably would have went to her church <laughs> and she was more open to receiving that invitation. Yeah. And so that's one way you just pay for someone's groceries. Mm -hmm. Look for a family, a young family that has kids. Um, that would be a huge blessing to mm -hmm. a young mom. And I would encourage you to do that. There's there's other ways that you can do that. Buy coffee for si someone sitting at a coffee shop. Um, invite a server that's serving you at a restaurant. We just did this. I was having breakfast with uh, someone in our church, a member of our church at Texas Hot. And we actually invited, we tag teamed and invited this lady who was serving us. Great conversation. She was totally open to it. And I'm hoping that she comes uh, to one of our services. But um, just being friendly with people who are serving yeah, you absolutely. is like a eye-opening experience for a lot of waitresses or waiters because that often doesn't happen. You shine like stars in the universe when that happens. Um, just all kinds of different ways that you can think of. And here's the big, here's the obvious one. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit prompts you, just here you go. Yeah, yeah. Is, you don't have to make it complicated. I think so often, we were talking about this earlier, so often we make outreach or sharing our faith or witnessing so complicated and certainly we got to obey the great commission right. and be like jesus the way the bible says but we don't have to be jesus like we don't have to be perfect we don't have to know everything like jesus did to participate in what jesus calls us to do we just need to be obedient mm -hmm. keep it simple stupid right that's yep. right yep. um so i would just encourage you just look for those ways look for the opportunities and invite people to a place of grace. One, one of my favorite on that list is, you know, it says, okay, if they're having a, a conversation, a, a, a spiritual or religious conversation comes up at work, mm. just use that opportunity to say, hey, you know, why don't you come check out my church? It's not knocking on a door. It's not taking that step. It's responding. They're having a conversation. Hey, I'd love to have you come to my church. That's, that's called come and see evangelism. Yeah. So yeah. there's go and tell where you got to have something to tell them. You're sharing the gospel with them, which we encourage everybody to do. Uh, who calls on the name of Jesus. But this is come and see, too. Yeah. You don't need to know all the answers or all the Bible information. Just come and see. I think you'll love it. In fact, I, I hear people do this all the time. And the way the conversation starts off with someone at work talking about church stuff, and they say, oh, I love my church. Oh, and, you know, they, they got a great youth program. And they just start getting excited about what's happening at their church. Just get excited about what yep. God's doing at your campus and watch what God will do through that invitation. And, and the other part of that that I know for me, I would love to see is, so they do show up. Yep. They do come to church. Get up from your seat and go sit with them. Yeah. Welcome them. You know, if, if, if they're, they come in a little bit after service has started, so get up in the middle of service and walk over and sit by them and make them feel welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely love that. So now we're getting into more of the organic, personal, you yeah. getting involved in the community with this type of outreach idea. One was programmatic, the other is people driven. It's just your everyday life. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's what I, I just want to warn our church about. You can become so busy with ministry inside the walls of the church that you have no, no room, no margin for ministry that happens outside of the church. Here's why that happens. I'm just giving you a little back, background behind the scenes. It's because so many churches have 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. So 20% of the people are committed and those are the, those are the ones that are going to say yes to anything and everything that their pastor or leaders say. And so they're doing not just one ministry, but two ministries, three ministries, four ministries. And so the most committed people who are excited about what God's doing at the church do not have time to go into the community and be involved with things that are happening in the community where lost people are. We're assuming that believers are inside the church, 
But we also need to make room in our schedules for people outside Absolutely. the church because that's where the lost people are. Why do I say that? It's because the people who do nothing in our church are adding to that problem. Mm -hmm. If you got so many people not doing one thing, one thing, I'm not talking about three things, I'm talking about one thing, you're making it harder for the people who are doing a lot of things because they can't get out and have time available to be in the community. And so we, yes, we want you to pick a ministry to serve in, but we want you to have enough margin in your schedule where you don't have any commitment to church because that means you will be regularly involved with something that's happening in the community. Like what? A lot of different things. Whatever you're interested in. I know you have done several things in, in the arcade community. Do you want to share one thing that you're doing personally? Uh, well, one of, some of the things I've done, again, COVID has adjusted some of this, but yeah. some of the things I've done in the past is I've helped with high school musicals, helped run sound for high school musical. Got a chance to rub elbows with some of the students. Got a chance to build relationships. Got yeah. a chance to give out Bibles to a kid, you know, that didn't have one. Sure. Um, because it's something that I enjoy and it was a need they had. And so I could step up and fill it. Then, then the other one that you recently had, which is just funny because <laughs> look at him, he's got the beard. And, but he had to sit through something. I'll, I'll let you tell him. A lady from our church um, has a dance studio. And they were struggling because, again, COVID, how do they have their recital? And so the plan was, let's film it and put it online for the parents to be able to see their kids dance and whatever. And so since we have the, the equipment to be able to do that at the right. church, so, so I took a camera and went and filmed way too many hours of <laughs> dance. Um, More than what you were anticipating. Well, and... and Again, look at me. Do I look like a dancer? I don't know. And uh, but picture, but I got to spend time stew with people in a uh, what do they call it? A, a tutu? tutu? No, tutu? I didn't have to wear a tutu. But did we lose everybody? <laughs> you everybody did, you did now. You just did. <laughs> they're gone. But um, but it was it was an opportunity, and it gave me a chance to talk to some people, right? To build relationships, and and you know, I think I know we really blessed the lady with the studio, obviously. Oh, yeah. But I think we really blessed a lot of the families too that weren't going to get a chance to watch their their child wasn't going to have a chance to do the uh, the uh, to, whatever, to come to, to, yeah, come to, to come it. to it yeah to come to it come to the event and do it and so they uh, I, I think it was really a blessing and, and you know gave and, me a chance to have some conversations and no one's going to hate you no one's going to say well, well, why is this what is this guy doing mm -hmm. and the reason why is because you're benefiting their kids yeah anytime you can do something to benefit a family's child like that speaks volumes and people are more open to building that relationship. Hope, you know, maybe eventually inviting them to church, but at the very least breaking down the preconceptions that people have about church. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, when you're doing something that benefits them, all walls come crumbling down. They don't have that barrier between them and church anymore because so many people have had a bad experience with yeah. church. Yeah. That's why we need to be active. We need to reshape what church should be because it's not just about coming to a building. We have this saying, he knows it, don't go to church. Be the church, baby. Baby, baby, <laughs> baby. Baby's not in it, but <laughs> don't go to church. Be the church. And so when we're actively involved in the community, sharing Christ's yep. love in a practical way, sharing the words of Jesus, but also being the hands and feet of Jesus, that makes a huge difference Absolutely. in people's lives. And so, you know, whether it's a, a, a music recital, a dance recital, I know I'm heavily involved in the youth basketball youth program sports. and just... Um, we've got kids from that basketball program that go to church because they were engaged with that. And I love those. It's just a way for me to use my passions and experiences and abilities mm -hmm. to bless people in the community. So whatever it is, just lean in, think about different ways that instead of just being so busy with the things inside the church, you're busy with the things in the community as well. We, we give you permission, which is not always Absolutely. the case, but we want you to not be so busy with things in the church. We want you to be engaged outside the church. What would prevent someone from doing that? Like maybe warning signs like we talked about last week, but things that might make it difficult for, for people to engage in this. Uh, one that we, we talked about was being intimidated by it, mm. right? I mean, it, it's intimidating to, I don't know, engage in some of these, some of these situations. Uh, on, a, on a personal level, I think it's just difficult. It's naturally difficult for people to just go do this. Yeah. I mean, they can 
maybe picture it in their mind, but actually doing it is difficult. And, and when we were talking about it earlier, I pointed to the, you know, one of our, um, uh, what can I Core values? Core, Core values. Core values. Yeah, that, thank you. <laughs> um, but playing it safe is risky, and, and that, I don't know, it challenges me, because there are certain things, there are some things lately that I've done that, you know, like a text or, or a letter of encouragement or, or something along those lines that when you're writing, you're like, oh, this doesn't sound right. Or I don't know if I should send it. But and then then I think of our core value. Well, playing it safe is is risky. Um, so let's pause there for a minute. What we mean by that is it's if you choose to stay safe, keep in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You think that it worked out. You think that you're okay. You think you're safe, but there's something behind the scenes in a spiritual realm that's at risk. Mm -hmm. A changed life, mm -hmm. someone coming to know Christ, that if you just got out of your comfort zone, if you didn't play it safe, something really, really good can happen. Yeah. And that's true in all of our spiritual journeys. Someone got out of their comfort zone, yep. counted the cost, was obedient to Christ, walked across the room and had the conversation. And so. Think about, think about, it's going to take some vision, but think about what's at stake when we don't step out in faith. So think about, think about what's at, what would be at stake in your life if someone didn't step out in faith. You got to put your thinking cap on and think long term, yeah, right? Absolutely. And see what the benefit for that person would be. Be a person that is willing to do whatever, whenever, wherever Christ called us to do. That's right. And you don't need to know all the answers. The, the thing, the reason why it's so intimidating is because we think we need to know all the answers. Right. You just need yeah. to be like the parable, the, the great banquet where he says, come, everything is now ready. Yep. I love, you know, I love my church. Come, get it, yeah. just check it out. You don't need yep. to know all the answers. You just got to just go. And, and that's the biggest thing I often hear. What if somebody asks me something I don't know the answer to? Just, just tell them, yeah. come, yep. come. I don't know the answer. Come and, and I think it's okay to say, I don't, I don't know, but we'll figure it out together. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great answer. People respond to that humility for sure. Absolutely. The other warning sign, I think that is obvious, is just margin. We've already talked about it, but if we don't have margin in our schedule, we, we won't do these things. Yeah. It takes great intentionality. And so um, as we close, I just want to point out this process that we've been talking about over the last three weeks is discover, develop, and display. That's the vision statement of our church, to lead people to discover, develop, and display it's not a checklist. Yeah. You don't come to church, discover Jesus, get into a small group, start growing in Jesus, and then share your faith one time. It's a process. It's, it's, a, an, it's a circle. And so you need to close the circle so that other people can discover, develop, and display. It's not a one and done. It's an ongoing process. If we don't do this, literally, here's what's at stake. If we don't do this, what we're talking about today, we run the risk of an entire generation not knowing who Christ is. Absolutely. Yep. I don't know if it was in Judges or not, but there's a verse that talks about how one generation failed to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. There's one generation, generation. and that's all it took yep. because they did not respond to his word. And so that's what's at stake now more than ever. If we stop talking, how will they hear if someone does not preach? Yep. How will they hear? How will they respond to faith if we do yep. not start talking about our faith? and living our faith out. Mm -hmm. And so my encouragement is re-engage. This is you, this is us, this is the church, but your church needs you. Partner with the gospel, be as what Paul says. I thank my God for every time I remember you. That's mm -hmm. our desire as pastors. When we think of you, we wanna be able to thank God, Absolutely. not say, good God. Like, <laughs> come on, like get their heart in it. Yeah. No, we wanna say, thank God. And then he says, for their partnership in the gospel. Amen. Friends, if you're listening to this, you need to ask this question. Are you a partner of the gospel? Or are you just a consumer mm -hmm. of church? We want less consumers, more contributors, more displayers of Christ's love. So as we wrap up, a few final thoughts. What would you say is like one big takeaway that you want your people to, to know and to do? I would say, number one, is especially speaking to those people who are not they're the they're the 20 percent or they're the, i should say they're the 80 percent of yeah. that aren't doing anything step up for one ministry just pick one just pick one just pick one because when they pick one that means as we we're saying that other the 20 percent that is doing three or four not only has to do two or three takes the burden off them. takes the burden and it gives them more margin okay more how margin. how how to step up? How do I? How do I get involved? How do I plug in? You want me to serve? Where do I? Where do I go? On every information wall at every campus is a ministry menu that has 
information on there of this is the this is the you, you talked about the catalog yeah. kind of talked about what the ministry is this is okay if I want to get involved in greeting this is the person I contact and look at okay. that and that'll give me that's who I got to talk to at the very least put on your connection card yep. your campus pastor will get you in touch with who you need to be in touch with to step up in those areas and so step up and serve in an area and you know what if you don't if you're not sure that's an area for you Step up and serve in it and tell them, you know, I'm looking to do this for six try months. Yeah. Try it out. Just try it out. See what happens. And then maybe you're plugged in there. Maybe you try another ministry. But step up and do something. Sure. Do okay. something. That's good. Honestly, man, my heart goes to just the recognition that this is a partnership, that mm -hmm. we participate in this together. Uh, I think it's so easy for people in the church to feel like, these are just a checklist of things mm. so that numbers look good at the end of a year or, you know, just some some religious action or checklist. This, is, this isn't it. That, that's not it. This is, this is a heart attitude. You know, like we, we do these things because this is the example that Jesus set for us. And, and we're striving to be like him and do the things that he did. And, and man, there's a lot. I mean, we... we push a lot of times Luke 10 to pray to the God of the harvest because the harvest is plentiful Man, there's lost and dying people out there and Absolutely. and we have to be obedient um, but the laborers are few the laborers are few and and man we're, we're wanting to lock arms with people not stand and say go like we want to lock arms and do ministry and reach lost people yeah and and it and I just think it's easy for people to disconnect church as a partnership from, you know, where it just becomes this mundane thing, I think. And it's, especially in this season, it, and I think the pastors have talked, it's, it's been that way for us a little bit. Yeah. And certainly if we feel that way, the people who we're serving feel that way. Yep, absolutely. And, and so, honestly, guys, my heart's desire is just to realize that uh, we're participating in this together. We're partners in this together. I hope there's a day in heaven when, when we stand and we, we see people from the Crosstown Church. Imagine the joy that's going to be involved. Like, I'm going to see people from Arcade and people from That's Greece, cool. people from Olean, people from Wellsville and recognize, man, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. we're, we participated in it together. That's and that, awesome. that to me, man, just... And, and adding awesome. to that, you know, one of Mike Pulowski, a good friend of mine at Arcade and a fairly new believer and came to church and he gave me one of the biggest compliments one time we were talking and he said one of the things he loves the most about Crosstown is that we expect people to serve and then we let them serve. Sometimes that's a challenge because somebody might do it a little differently than you were going to do it. You know, yeah. maybe that's my challenge to some of the ministry leaders is when somebody steps in, if they do it a little bit different, but it still gets the job done, it's okay. Sure. And and I think we all need to hear that sometime. But I love that that we're a team, we're a partnership. Yes, we expect you to step up and serve, and then we're going to let you. Not because we're over you watching what you're doing, but because we're a team and right. we're locking arms and we're coming together and we're going to accomplish That's this awesome. together. Yeah, the church is a family. Absolutely. It takes a family to reach the community. And if you're a part of the family, we want you to be involved. So this has been a really great discussion, not only this week, but the last couple weeks. And uh, this is why we exist and what we do. Why we exist and what we do to lead people, to discover, develop, and display full devotion to Jesus Christ. So thanks so much for engaging with our vision thanks so much for participating in this conversation now we got some work to do so let's go be the church don't just go to church be, be the, the church. church thank you guys